Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. Today I'm going to teach you about something that is not spoken in churches often, but is extremely important to every believer. Today we're going to talk about how to anoint your home. Get ready. Drop the Today's topic that we're going to be discussing is called how to anoint your home. Again, today's topic that we're discussing is called how to anoint your home. Another title I could give this teaching could be how to cleanse your home. In my time in ministry, I will tell you that I've often had people reach out to me and ask me if I would swing by their house and either anoint it or pray over it or turn around and cleanse it. I will tell you that they're all the same thing. And even though this is such an important topic, I will also tell you it's not something that's really taught about too often. I can't necessarily tell you why that is other than it just hasn't been given a lot of attention, but I will tell you that most people in the churches that they go to, if you go to the heads of their church, whether it be your pastor or the pastoral staff or the elders, if you inquire about wanting someone to go by and pray or anoint your home, usually they have a person or a group of people dedicated to doing that function. Now, not all churches do. And I will tell you that if you lead a church and you're listening to this teaching, I highly encourage you to go before the Lord and pray about training up some people who can start to do this within your church. At the same time, if you just don't have those resources, there's nothing wrong with you partnering with other local churches within your area. And when people come with this type of a need, reaching out to them and asking if their staff or their people can help you out. We're one body of Christ, and it's time that we start helping each other out instead of always feeling like we're in competition with each other. That being said, I want to talk to you today about what it means to anoint your home and some simple steps you can do it. One of the first questions I get asked is, what does it mean to anoint your home? Well, to anoint your home simply means you turning around and anointing your home with either, usually it's with an anointing oil, but some people, especially based on what type of faith they are, especially if they're of a Catholic faith, they may choose to use holy water, and both are just fine. What I will tell you is that when I do it personally, I always use oil, but I always carry anointing oil on me. This is oil that has been consecrated for the use of the Lord's use only, and I anoint to cleanse homes when I'm using this oil. I use it for different things, but when I I'm doing a prayer walkthrough or a cleansing of a home, I'll use this oil. Now, that being said, we should probably first discuss very quickly what, why we anoint and the different types of anoints there are. The Bible shows us very clearly that there's three different reasons why we anoint. The first reason why we anoint is to bless, the second one is to protect, and the third one is to break or to cleanse. I'll give you three quick examples of what each one was. If you go back to the story of the prophet Samuel, and when he went to King David and he turned around and anointed David, this is before David was the king, but when he was a shepherd boy out in the field, the Lord had sent the prophet Samuel to go and anoint him to be the future king of Israel because Saul was no longer going to be king because of his rebellion towards God. When he sent the prophet Samuel to David, the prophet Samuel poured oil over his head and he anointed him. In other words, he blessed him to step into or fulfill the role that God had called him or purpose God had called him to fulfill. When we're blessed like that, we're blessing our uh, um when we're blessing, we're blessing our abilities and we're blessing our resources. And he blessed him to fulfill that. The next one I want to share with you is blessing or as anointing for cleansing. If you remember in the word, the Lord was talking to his disciples and they tried casting out a demon out of someone and they were unable to do so. And in it, one of the scriptures, and there's different varying scriptures about this, but the scripture says that he told them that this type of demon can only come out through fasting and through anointing with water. He talked about actually anointing them with water to cast the demon out. That's for cleansing. You anoint to cleanse. And the third way goes back to the story of Moses when he was with the, is, the Israelites, when they were in the Hebrews, when they were in Egypt and they were in bondage under Pharaoh. God had already been sending his different plagues and things on Pharaoh to release his people, and Pharaoh didn't want to do so. So at the feast of Passover, when he turned around and the Lord told Moses that to have 
every Hebrew person slaughter a lamb and put the blood on the lintel of the door, which means the top and sides of the door frame. That way is when his, the spirit of death passed through the land that night. It was going to take the firstborn child of every family that did not have that mark on there. That was an anointing for protection. So when we talk about anointing homes, the reason why we do it is to cleanse it of unclean or foul or demonic spirits out of that place. I will also tell you this, and this is extremely important. Anointing is not limited when you're anointing your home. It's not limited to just the house you stay in. If you are in the military or you travel for any reasons, I travel often. And when I do, before I ever get situated in my hotel, I always anoint it to cleanse it of any foul and unclean spirit that has ever operated or moved through that room. And I anoint the headboard of where I will be laying my head and I speak uh, good dreams over that situation. The reason why that's so important, especially in hotels, is because you have different people go through those hotels. They operate and act in different manners. And unclean spirits or demons are very real. That is a very real thing that exists. If you don't believe that and you think this is a wacky teaching, that's okay. But I'm telling you, this is a real deal. And when you do, you're simply cleansing it of those foul spirits so that they can't try to cling to you or more than anything, just to clean them out so that you can turn around and have a clean environment. If you turn around and you do this in your own home, I will tell you that this is extremely important to do. Why? Because oftentimes if you're renting an apartment or renting a home or purchasing a home, there's been someone in that home before you, whether if it was the people who built it, whether if it was the people that remodeled it or the people who lived there before you, there's been other people in that home and it's important for you to anoint. I want to go over with you some simple steps or some simple questions that I've been asked that I hope clarify this for you a little further. And it's also going to clarify why it's important or how to anoint your home. The first question that we get asked is usually how long does it take to anoint or to cleanse a home? I will tell you that obviously that's dependent on how big the house is, but for most homes, it usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes if the home is empty. If the home is not empty, then it certainly can take longer and I'll explain why. With an empty home and someone means, well, what do you mean with an empty home? Well, I will tell you that any home that I purchase for me and my family, before I ever move one thing into it, before I move one roll of toilet paper or paper towels or anything into that home, I'll turn around and I will anoint all, I will anoint air, the property line, the front, the back and the sides. I will then turn around and I will open the front door and I will anoint the home and then begin my walkthrough or my cleansing walkthrough of the home before anything is moved in. I will tell you though that times of anointing a home can vary even if it's empty because when you're going through a home, I've had times before where I'm anointing a home and the Lord will impress upon me emphatically when I enter a certain room that maybe there was child abuse or molestation or something that happened in there before and I have to cleanse that room and get those foul spirits or in their presence of those foul spirits, the remnant of those foul spirits out of that place before I can continue on to the next room. So it depends. Now for most people, they are not moving. I mean, for some of you, this will benefit you in the future if you move into a new home, but most people are already established in their home. So the next question comes up is, can I anoint my home still even though I already have stuff in it? And the answer is yes. However, when you're anointing a home, one of the things I tell people when they ask is that as if I go through and anoint your home, if there's something that I feel has a foul spirit attached to it, I will cleanse that item. However, if I receive an instruction from the Lord that that item must go, you have to be willing to part with anything that's within this home. And I make sure they are in full agreement with that before I go in and invest my time in their home. The reason why is because if I tell them that their kitchen table's got to go or their, you know, their coffee table in their living room and they say, okay, and we go put it outside and I cleanse the home and leave and they drag that coffee table right back in, that did no good and it wasted my time. You must be willing to cleanse or depart from things that the Lord shows you to part from. 
I'll give you a great example. Sometimes I encounter people who struggle with depression, and if they struggle with depression, I'll start asking them about it. Like, well, you know, where do you feel depressed the most? Oh, I feel depressed at my dining room table. Really? Well, tell me about this dining room table. How long have you had it? Well, it was passed down to me from my mom, and, and, and she received it from my grandma. And so I'll start asking him, does your mom struggle with depression? Yeah, she struggles with depression. Does your grandma struggle with depression? Yeah, she struggles with it too. Well, then there you have it. The, your grandmother pressed down a generational curse to you through that table. It was a spouse spirit that clinged to the table. And in addition to that, your mom got it and then she passed it to you. Get rid of the table. <laughs> that, that may sound silly, but I'm telling you that that is a very real thing. If you're doing this in a hotel setting, what I simply do is you can't go throw out the bed. I mean, it ain't your bed, it's the hotel, but simply go through and we'll do a prayer walkthrough and anoint everything within the room. The next question that I tend to get is who can perform a spiritual cleansing or prayer walkthrough or anointing of a home? The fact is that's a good question and the answer is you can. Now, if you don't feel spiritually built up to do so, then you need to go to the leadership of your church and ask them to help you or direct you to someone who can. But it should be a trusted source you know. I remember years ago when I first heard about this, the Lord was stirring it in my heart that it was something He wanted me to do. And we were getting ready to move into a new home. And so I went to one of the pastors of the church I was going to at the time. It was a pastor by the name of Pastor Tony. He's a really good man, someone I like and look up to. And as I went to him and asked him and I was talking about it, he was giving me information about what it meant to cleanse the home. And I asked him, well, can you do this or someone do this? And the question he bounced back at me is, well, why can't you do it? And I said, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> can I do it? I didn't know if I could. He said, yeah, you have to understand that you have authority as a believer to do so. You've been given permission to do so. And at that point, I never looked back. It was one of the greatest things I heard in my personal walk. And at that point, I went and did my prayer walkthrough, and I've been doing them ever since. The next question that I get is when's the best time? The best time for you to do it is before you move anything into the home. However, second to that, if you've already got stuff in it, then the best time for you to do it is the moment you hear this teaching. <laughs> the moment you first find out about it or hear about it, if you're married or, or you know whatever, you need to get in alignment with whoever owns that home. Uh, or if you're renting it, then you're in charge of that home. If you're married, you need to get in alignment with your spouse and you need to do it at that time. The best time for you to do it is before you move anything into it or once you learn about this to go before the Lord and pray about it and then to do it. You know, you don't have to be having kooky things happen within your house to benefit from a prayer walkthrough or anointing of your home. But I will tell you that oftentimes people have funny things or things in their house. They'll have certain, or certain sounds or things that they hear sometimes. And I'm not trying to say this to scare you, but it's important for you to do prayer walkthroughs of your home and consecrate them unto the Lord. The next question that we get are what are the items that are needed? I will tell you really you only need two items. The first one is really a dedication scripture for your home. And that's not necessarily an item, but something that you go before the Lord and He directs you to in His Word. And you don't have to have a dedication scripture, but it's usually good because it establishes that you're anointing His home and standing on the Word. And you're anointing your home and you're dedicating the scripture over your home. That's an important thing. But the main thing you need is something to anoint the home with, whether that be anointing anointing oil or holy water, but I strongly recommend anointing oil. And if you don't have anointing oil, it's not something special you got to go buy. You simply, if you have any type of oil in your home, but preferably olive oil, you simply get a little bit of olive oil, you put it in a separate dish, and you pray over that oil to consecrate it. And once you've done consecrating it, I usually exalt the name of Jehovah Makedesh over it, and that uh, I am the Lord who consecrates. And when you exalt that name over it, and you pray over that and dedicate it, that that's going to be used only for the anointing purposes of God. Once you're done anointing your home, you dump it out. You don't turn around and cook it. That oil cannot be used for anything else. If you want to save it for later use, you can, but you must always know that that oil cannot be used for anything else but to anoint. And the last thing I get asked is, how do I pray? I will tell you praying is very simple, but this is how I do it. When I'm doing a prayer walkthrough of a home, I anoint the, the perimeter of the home first. In other words, I anoint the front and back property lines on the side. 
I will then turn around and I will go to the home and I will open the front door and I will at least make sure it's cracked. And I anoint the lintel of the door. I anoint the top of the door frame and the sides. You can make a sign of the cross or you can just simply swipe your finger over it. But I say I anoint this home in the name of Jesus. And I dedicate this home to you, Father. And I exalt the name of Jehovah Shema over that, that I, that I am the God who's there. I exalt God over the home that He's the God who's there. And then I just simply say, I speak to any foul or unclean or devilish or demonic spirit that's within this home. You are no longer allowed to be in this home. I'm dedicating it to the purpose of the Lord's use. And I am commanding you now to leave this house. Ministering spirits and angels, I command you to form a hedge of protection around me, but I command you to go through this home and cleanse any foul spirit that's in this home. And then you must leave that front door open. I guess you don't necessarily have to. Some people say, oh, you don't have to. I always do. Why? So in case something's in the home, it can get out. <laughs> so I turn around and I leave the door open and then I go room by room and I anoint every wall. I anoint every window and I anoint every wall within the home. I don't get silly and try to anoint the roof and stuff like that or the ceiling, but I anoint all the walls. And as I'm praying, if you know how to pray in tongues or pray in the spirit, then I will tell you it's beneficial for you to pray in the spirit while you're doing this. But at the same time, as you're walking through and you're praying over the home, you pray in the Spirit. If you don't know how to pray in the Spirit, then you just start, you know, praising the name of Jesus or you start speaking His Word and praying in your native language, whatever that is, English or whatever, you pray through the home. But it's best if you can pray in tongues. Why? Because when we allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us, He's praying things that we don't even know or understand about, but He's praying things that need to be prayed for or prayed over. So as we go through the home, as you're going through it, if an image pops up in your mind or an idea, it could be that there is something foul within there. And if you encounter a foul spirit, that's nothing for you to get scared of. It's not like they can jump on you or anything like that. You don't want to be afraid of that. You have the authority of the believer on you. You simply turn around and speak to it and say, in the name of Jesus, foul spirit, I rebuke you and command you to leave this place now in Jesus name. And you anoint the home and you continue going through. It's not a long, drawn-out battle. The fact is, the Word tells us that we're more than conquerors. We're the victors and not the victims. We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed going in, and we're blessed going out. Praise God. Guys, I know this video was a little longer today, but this is an instructional video that I hope helps you. It's meant to help you be able to know how to cleanse your home and the homes of those around you and the loved ones you encounter. As always, we want to remind you to go by our website at neilreyes.com and check out all of our teaching resources, or you can find us on social media at YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. We stream all of our teachings 24 hours a day at no cost on our website and through our social media. We also invite you to subscribe, to like, follow, uh, whatever it is. We invite you to get connected with us and then share these teachings with others. If you find these teachings encouraging, there's a strong chance others will too. Guys, as always, we want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you, and so do we. Thank you so much, and have a blessed day.